one thing that people are really surprised about is the cedar trees. Um, they love, they just go to them like candy in the winter because they really love that green. I tell people a lot of the goats real work happens in the winter and that's true with shumac, it's true with most brush species including buck brush and what they do is after the fall's over and they've eaten all the leaves they go back to those stems where a lot of those starches and sugars are stored and they will just chew on those stems like a kid with a candy cane and what that does is that that takes away everything that the plant accomplished that year and so then the next spring, that plant has to use all of its resources to try to regrow to be able to keep itself alive. The goats in the summer like to graze in circles, grazing off those leaves, which is the, the plant's real only source of life because that, that's how photosynthesis occurs. And so without those leaves, it can't sustain itself. So after a few years, that's why I've said, I like to go at it a little bit slower because after a few years, that plant has depleted its reserves and just goes ahead and dies. And so that's really the, the goal of our goat operation in brush control. One other thing that is just has really been a blessing for us, especially this year, I actually just took some cold nannies to the sale. The goat market is completely separate from the cattle market, the even the lamb market, the grain market. It follows none of that. It follows more ethnic holidays and so especially with this recent covid pandemic the goat market hasn't decreased at all i was actually a little bit disappointed dad and i were talking about the the cares act and getting a little bit of some payment for the cows and stuff and our our the person taking care of it said that the goats aren't included and i was like i wonder why that is we'll come to find out to be included in that a species had to have at least a five percent dip in the market and goats didn't they actually went up and so there there was pros and cons to that i was a little bit sad that i wasn't going to get some extra help but that just shows how how diversifying has helped us a little bit because while cattle and the other markets are taking a hit the goats just keep going up and so for us this spring that has been a, a, a real help um, with my goats i leave them out on flint hills pasture pretty much all year round. I bring them in to kid them into some smaller kidding pastures and that's just because of coyote pressure. I need my goats to be self-sustaining. I need them to be independent. I need them to be athletic because they're gonna do it all themselves. I don't, with the cattle that we run and with the number of goats we run, I don't have time to be babying them. Uh, a lot of people think that goats have to have a lot of help and a lot of goats do have to have a lot of help. But the Spanish goats that I run I need them to be self-sustaining. With those goats, I, I have to run livestock guardian dogs. It's just, it would be impossible to have the goat operation without those guard dogs. Our coyote pressure is just too strong. Um, I run a lot of several different breeds. Most of them are kind of mutts, just mixed breeds. I have some Pyrenees, Anatolian crosses. Um, one of the dogs that I, I did some research on and invested in a little bit more than I normally would on a dog is called Sarplaninik. And it's a Yugoslavian, Macedonian, kind of Serbia old breed. There's kind of some military lines. And then from those mountains, that's where they originated. And they're an old guardian breed. And my hope is that having some of that old blood really brings in some really strong guardian instincts. And so that's still kind of a project that I'm working on and we'll kind of see how that goes. I don't normally have a lot of predator loss with those dogs, especially most of the year. The only year that I lose very much is during the kidding season. And it's just, those kids are so small and nannies are kidding so rapidly, it's almost impossible for dogs to be everywhere at once. And so that's, I mean, that's kind of what I'm talking about, about the learning curve. There's just a death loss in goats and that there isn't in cattle most of the time you just you have to constantly be aware of predator issues and the goat the goat industry doesn't have near the money behind it that cattle do so your vaccinations and options for treatment are very limited um, you have to have a good relationship with your vet 
and possibly him have a good relationship with a vet that actually knows goats because goats aren't necessarily the most um, taught or studied animal. And so there are some specialists that you and your vet may have to work with. But um, for the most part, the, the other thing that I would say is visit some ranches, visit some different operations with the goats. There are a lot of good systems. I, I've learned some hard lessons and if someone comes to me and wants to come visit, most of the time, if I'm around, I say yes, because I would rather them learn from my mistake and not have to do it themselves. And I think that most, most other ranchers would agree with that. And so do your research both on goats and on dogs. There's a lot of, most of the failures in the goat industry is because people jumped in too fast without being prepared, without being ready. I, a lot of times, caution people, start the first year small, smaller than you think is necessary. Do it for a year or two, make sure it's gonna work. And then when you start seeing it work, when you start feeling comfortable, you can start adding, you can start doing more. And so that's kind of, that's kind of most of the, what I would consider the importance on the goat, the goat issue. Um, we're really pleased with how things are looking this year, both with the pastures and with, I mean, just the market and the chance for profitability with them. I mean, this year has just really been a good year.